Hi everybody, today I'd like to talk to you about Super High Lake Safflowers, a new break crop option for the Eastern Australian cropping belt. Some of you will have grown safflowers in the past, most of you won't have, so today I'd like to talk to you about what's different about this crop, the basic agronomy principles involved in growing it, and who to contact if you'd like to know more about it and get involved. So firstly, Super High Lake Safflowers were developed by Go Resources in conjunction with CSIRO. They're genetically modified to improve oil quality. So unlike other GM crops, which are modified to improve their herbicide tolerance, safflowers are modified to improve the oil quality. So basically the saleable or desirable oleic content, content of the crop, or the oil has been dialed right up and the less desirable linoleic component has been dialed right back. So regardless of the seasonal finish, super high oleic safflowers deliver a highly high quality and highly saleable product every time. So that's a really useful trait to have. They're an alternative break crop option uh, in Eastern Australia. They will be an alternative to things like canola, lupins, chickpeas. And their major benefit is they have a great fit on sodic soil. So they, they tolerate some tricky soils, particularly in that mid rainfall belt that some of their other break crops don't perform particularly well on. So they get out of the ground and quite well in sodic soils and they can also access some moisture at depth that things like canola on particular soil types uh, where, where they won't go so well. So a brief overview of the crop, their cost is $5 a kilo. The typical sowing rate is 18 to 20 kilos a hectare. You'd sow them in May or August, and depending on the sowing date, they will be 130 to 150 days to flower. Typically, you'd avoid sowing them in the middle of winter because they're vigor early. They're, a, they're slow to start with, but their vigor is particularly slow uh, when it's really cold. So vigor is related to soil temperature. So typically, you'd get them in in May if you can. That's the highest yield potential. Uh, if you don't get them in in May, you'd wait until August until the ground temperature is starting to rise again, and you'd sow then. So that will give you some opportunities in terms of knockdown and potentially being able to double knock problem weeds like ryegrass. Uh, from, that, from those two sowing dates, you'd then look at harvesting during December or January, and you'll be paid six fifty a tonne on farm for the safflower seed that you produce. And that price is set right through the season. So you sign a contract at the start, and you'll be paid six fifty a tonne on farm at harvest time. And the reason they can achieve that is because of the GM trait. So the oil quality is really consistent, and it makes it very easy to, to market and produce a high quality product. Basic agronomy, they're not competitive early, so you're going to need a pre-emergent herbicide. Uh, you can use Treflan or even Avidex, and there's a range of other products that can be used under a permit basis. But rather than go through all of those now, I'd suggest you talk to your local advisor and talk about what's going to be the best fit on your farm relative to the weeds that you're trying to control. Uh, in crop, in terms of grass weed control, you can use Clepidim, they do have a bit of an issue. They can be susceptible with susceptible to red-legged earth mite at establishment, like a lot of other break crops. So I'd suggest that you put out an insecticide at sowing, something like a Talstar, a bare earth spray, just to make sure earth mites don't attack the crop as it's establishing. And from there, keep an eye on rather glen bugs during early grain fill. Can potentially they can potentially be a problem also. Uh, in summary, this is just a brief overview of the crop. Uh, there's a, as I said earlier, the price is fixed at $650 a tonne on farm, so that's pretty attractive. From the day you sow, you know what you're going to be paid at harvest time, and there, there aren't too many options available like that. So you can, very good from a budgeting point of view. They're very tolerant of sodic soils, so they're a great fit on some tricky soil types, uh, particularly through that medium rainfall belt, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, they flower later than wheat and canola. So from a frost risk point of view, they're really tool to have in, really useful tool to have in the cupboard. Uh, and also with that flexible sowing window, so we can manage frost, but we can also manage weeds in terms of uh, 
having a really good opportunity to get a, a solid knockdown uh, before before they go in the ground. To harvest them, you can direct head them. So unlike canola, uh, there's no windrowing costs. So they're relatively cheap to grow and relatively straightforward. Nutrition will be similar to a wheat crop. So phosphorus starter fertilizer at sowing and a little bit of urea if the season's tracking along nicely, which hopefully this year it will be. For further information, initially I'd suggest you contact Alyssa Mitchell from Delta Ag. Liz will be handling the contract side of things and be able to help you get hold of some seed. Uh, David Hudson from Go Resources. Uh, Rock has been heavily involved with the development of this crop, so there's much, not much he doesn't know about them uh, and a really good contact. If you're looking for more information and lastly, if you're looking for any more information on the agronomy side of things, happily pick up the phone to myself. So that's about all I've got for you today. Uh, best of luck with the rest of the season. I hope it's a ripper. Thanks.